our fleet is not the Navy. Whenever I'm told this, it's usually by a Star Trek fan who doesn't know very much about the U.S. naval roots of Star Trek, and it's usually when they realize they are losing a lore-related argument and feel insecure in their knowledge level, which is not something they're accustomed to. It's a self-evident statement that attempts to, among other things, negate the very relevant inspiration and template for the fleet in which most Star Trek characters belong. In Star Trek's infancy, many of the elements and details of the show's narrative were in flux. The show couldn't seem to decide in the beginning what the name of the organization the characters worked for was, for example. But even in the beginning, it was obvious that the show was about a ship in a spacefaring navy. The personnel all had naval ranks, like Ensign, and naval job titles, like Yeoman. The vessel was commanded by someone of Captain Rank, a rank that would be referred to in any other U.S. Armed Forces branch as Colonel. The crew also uh, used U.S. Naval verbiage for various areas of the ship, like the bridge and the dispensary slash sickbay. The floors in the ship were referred to as decks, the inner walls were referred to as bulkheads, and instead of firing missiles, the ship fired torpedoes. The list goes on and on. With the recent video I did about the USS Titan, it occurred to me that some of my newer viewers may not have been familiar with what I was talking about regarding terms like class. While I did make a video about this a couple of years ago, that video has since been lost to the Salt Vampire and one of his manic episodes, so I figured it was time for me to do a bit of a refresher. In the United States Navy, including at the time Star Trek was created and for several decades afterward, ships are produced and organized into classes. The first ship of a given class typically names the class. This tradition has been followed in most Star Trek series except for the more recent ones, and we'll get into that a little later. However, as some have pointed out, there was a commissioning plaque on the bridge of the original Enterprise that looked like this and stated that the ship was, quote, Starship Class. Now, this production error came from an unfortunate choice of terminology that was in effect in the Navy around that time, in which what we now refer to in the Navy as a ship's type was referred to as a ship's classification. Type and classification referred to the design purpose of a given ship, like aircraft carrier, cruiser, and attack submarine. The use of the term classification led to it being abbreviated as class, and this, needless to say, led to some confusion for new people joining the Navy and also for writers and producers trying to draw inspiration from the Navy when creating a fictional Navy for a TV show. Dialogue from Scotty confirms that the term starship is a type of ship or a classification of ship in the era depicted in the original series not the proper name of a given ship class. You know, I served aboard 11 ships, freighters, cruisers, starships, but this is the only one I think of, the only one I miss. So just so we're square, type refers to what kind of ship a given ship is, and class refers to, for lack of a better term, the specific model of a given ship. So if we were talking about road vehicles, this one would have a type of car, or specifically coupe, while the class would be Rambler. This one would have a type of Jeep and a class of Wrangler. This one would have a type of pickup truck and a class of F3. Yes, sometimes classes don't have actual names, but rather alphanumeric designations, like the submarines of the S-Class and starships of the NX-Class. For most of the 20th century, the U.S. Navy also had name themes for their ships. For example, the submarines of the Los Angeles-Class were all named after U.S. cities, uh, with one exception, that exception being the USS Hyman G. Rickover, which was originally going to be called the Providence. With the retirement of Admiral Rickover, the father of the nuclear navy, it was decided that SSN 709 would be named after him and a later ship of the class would be named Providence. 
Submarines of the sturgeon class were largely named after aquatic life, usually fish. The same could be said for World War II-era submarines of the Gato, Baleo, and Tench classes. I'd like to point out at this time that U.S. naval submariners, at the time I was in, didn't call, for example, the ships of the Los Angeles class, Los Angeles class. That was what the academics called them. Working men referred to them as 688 class, or simply as 88s. Hey Greg, what kind of boat you on these days? Well Merv, she's an 88. Get the idea? My boat's class was not referred to in common speech as sturgeon class, but rather 637 class, or just 37s. Naval personnel have a tendency to abbreviate as much as they can, so I want to be clear in case you meet an old submariner and ask them what kind of boat they were on. Their answer will most likely be something like an 88, a 37, or maybe even a trident. That last one is what a lot of ballistic missile submariners call their boats, as it references the kind of nuclear weapon they carry, rather than the class of ship they belong to. You're also hearing me pronounce this word as submariner, but you might meet a subvet who pronounces it submariner. Both are correct depending on who you talk to. I use submariner mostly because I used to read Marvel comics and that was the name of one of their superheroes. To date, the only class of starship in Star Trek that has a name theme that is exactly the way I have described them thus far are the Danube-class runabouts seen on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, which were all named after Earth rivers. However, it must be noted that the USS Cerritos in the Secret Hideout animated Star Trek parody series Lower Decks belongs to a class that does have a name theme. The California class in Star Trek Lower Decks has a name theme that is modeled after themes found in other real-world fleets besides the US most notably the British Navy. The starships of the California class are not named after U.S. states, but rather cities within the state of California. This is similar to the British Admiral class battlecruiser naming theme. The first of this class was not called the Admiral. It was the HMS Hood, which was named after an Admiral, as all the ships of this class were. Hence, the Brits referred to this class as the Admiral Class. I feel it's also important to point out that the U.S. Navy itself has loosened up their naming traditions in the last 20 years when it comes to ship classes and themes. For example, the Seawolf class has no real name theme. The first submarine was called the Seawolf, which is a nickname of, for a fish called the Narraketanai. The second Seawolf class submarine was called the Connecticut, which is a state. The third and final one was called the Jimmy Carter, named after the only U.S. president to have qualified on submarines and who is largely responsible for the Kings Bay, Georgia ballistic missile submarine base. The newest attack submarine class in the United States Navy is the Virginia class, mostly named after U.S. states. This class, however, is divided into subdivisions called blocks, and the latest block, still under construction, is supposed to go back to aquatic names like Barb and Wahoo. Interestingly, this comes at a time when Starfleet on Star Trek appears to be embracing older designs like the new Neo-Constitution-class Titan. In the U.S. Navy, ships that serve the United States have a prefix USS before their name. USS stands for United States Ship. Vessels with no commission to serve the United States, but instead the U.S. Navy have the prefix USNS, which stands for United States Navy Ship. In Starfleet, most fans tend to agree that USS stands for United Spaceship, as that is how O.G. Pike spelled it out in the episodes uh, The Cage and The Menagerie. They're men. They're humans. Captain Christopher Pike, United Spaceship Enterprise. If a ship in Starfleet doesn't have a commission to serve the Federation, it may have the prefix NX, like the NX-01 Enterprise, since it was a pre-Federation ship, and the USS Excelsior from Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, which was a ship in a pre-commissioned state. For those of you who are wondering, HMS stands for His Majesty's Ship as of right now. 
when Queen Elizabeth II was alive, it stood for Her Majesty's Ship. You have to admire the efficiency of the British Navy in this regard. They can change the meaning of the prefix without having to change the prefix itself and repaint all their ships. Now, in Starfleet, almost all registry numbers for their ships begin with the letters NCC. To my knowledge, there's been no canonical explanation as to what these letters mean. Some non-canonical sources claimed it stands for Naval Construction Contract, which is similar to how the Soviet Union used to organize their ships. I've also heard some people try to equate NCC with CCCP, which is probably one of the weakest and most leftist arguments pertaining to the Star Trek I've ever heard. In the U.S. Navy, the registry identifies in some way the type of ship that you're talking about. For example, my submarine, the USS Trepang, had a hull number registry of SSN 674. The SSN stood for Submersible Ship Nuclear. The USS Ronald Reagan's hull number is CVN-76. Now, this one is a little tricky and honestly a little dumb. If you Google it or use Wikipedia to try to find out what CVN stands for, you will read that it stands for Carrier Volplane Nuclear or perhaps Carrier Vessel Nuclear. That is not, however, what I was taught in basic training in the 90s. What they taught us was that CV wasn't an acronym so much as a hull classification symbol. The N at the end of said symbol is a suffix that modifies it to include the detail that the vessel is nuclear. The three letters are to be taken as a whole as a symbol rather than an acronym. It's one of those don't try to make sense of it kind of things. So keeping that in mind, Starfleet's NCC may not stand for anything. In Darren's headcanon, however, the two Cs stand for the ship's ability to go in multiples of the speed of light, which is often expressed as a C in formulas like E equals MC squared. I discovered the formula for splitting beer atoms. Ink. But... Darren's headcanon should not be taken for anything other than that which it is. Anyway, I hope this helps anyone who didn't understand these things before better understand them in the future. If you're the kind of person who likes to know where things in the Star Trek franchise came from or come from, you may have found this interesting. If not, then you're probably staring at your screen and shouting, Starfleet is not the Navy! Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider purchasing a copy of my book, Captain Steel and Other Stories, on Amazon, especially if you are a fan of speculative fiction.